Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, September 5th meeting of the Stackbridge Assessors. Uh, Mike? Good morning. Brandy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. Um, the last meeting we had to cancel, um, but the, the one prior to that, I have carried over almost every item, um, plus what we were going to review at the last meeting. Uh, there are motor vehicle abatement applications to review. Brandy, did you want to come in and sign those or we could just wait until you come in? Um, I can try to stop in this week. Okay. All right. Um, number three, the CL1 forms for the, all of the Chapter 61A and 61B um, filers were sent out from our office last week. So those are in the mail and those will be for um, everyone that owns a or has a chapter 61A piece of land um, or 61B recreational. Those forms have to be returned to the, uh, this is just a procedure and we do it every year, have to be returned. I think we're giving till October, October 3rd, no, October 2nd was on the letter. Um, number four, we do have, we did get some notice of hearings finally from the appellate tax board. Um, nothing I actually have to, to actually go to Boston for. They're actually going to be Zoom video conferences, which we've never done before, but I'm, I'm happy with that. And it's going to be for, um, one is scheduled for October 6th, a Friday, and October 24th, a Tuesday. Uh, I haven't heard anything yet from the uh, taxpayers on these, but as you know, I'm prepared to, to just do the Zoom meeting and see what happens with those um, two. There's still three that we're waiting to, to get scheduled. I haven't heard anything yet. Those will probably be scheduled for Boston, but that's the um, Camp Mackinac, which we t typically do an income approach on. That we haven't heard back from yet. And this, this would be it. It's those three and these two, and then there's no more appellate tax board cases for fiscal 23. So Michael, you said three, but you mentioned one name. There's, there's three cards or the three abatements within that same organization? Yes, three properties, yep. They, they could file in a lump, but they always do it individually. Okay, number five. Um, so fiscal year 24 is happening as far as the valuations and the subsequent tax rate setting and just an update on the sales analysis. I'm compl I've completed it. It's done, and now that we're in September, everything needs to be submitted. And I haven't talked to uh, Joe Barberi yet, but he's aware that you know I gave him a, a, a bit of a time frame on when I thought we were going to be able to submit, and everything fits <laughs> within the ratios um, where it's supposed to be for fiscal twenty four. And I'm looking, right now I'm working on the personal property, which is just putting in all the business changes. I've already done all the adjustments to the second homes for the 2% because of the value changes you have to change. Well, you don't technically have to, the state hasn't made a ruling on that, but we change the values on those every year. I'm finished with that part. I'm working this week on updating the utility values and the business valuations. Once that done is done, then come Monday and all through next week, I will be submitting the um, LA-15, the LA-4, the um, LA-3, which is all of our sales that we used. And I'll have the new growth LA-13 ready to go. He probably won't look at it in, until everything else is, is approved, but we're, you know, we're, we're ready to go. Um, I don't want to get into too much of the valuation changes. I will, I mean, we've talked about this over the summer and spring that there are going to be some big changes um, based on the 2022 sales. Um, that definitely has happened. There probably isn't a category that didn't see a change upward. 
Um, it, will it be as severe as it was last year? As far as valuation goes, it depends on the type of property that you own. And we'll have a better idea when we get the um, tax rate set as to the Im final impact of what the valuation changes are going to be. We would anticipate that the tax rate will go down quite a bit like it did last year because the valuations um, did go up and they will probably go up again next year looking at the sales that are happening now. So it, everything we thought that was going to happen did happen and um, we'll see what the state has to say. We conform, we are within the certification standard guidelines, um, but of course they'll, they will obviously question, you know, like, like they have to do anyway, the increase in the valuations across the board. Any conversation on that? I mean, do you want to go any further? I mean, again, we will, I don't see any problems with the submission. There were um, 30 sales that we used. Last year we used 36. And I have to explain the outliers that we didn't use in the sales analysis. I'm prepared to, you know, defend those with a spreadsheet that we submit, but I don't see any any issues. Uh, it was it was difficult to get the um, the valuations to be within the the ninety to one hundred and ten percent of market value. We're around ninety eight percent of market value. Again, by the time the tax bills go out, we're already almost a year out from you know the sales analysis period that we're using. But that's typical in every community. So just to say it in a more simple way, so the thirty sales that you saw were all. All higher than the current assessment. every every one of them yeah. and actually I'm still now I'm now that the valuations have been changed and the LA4 has been updated every sale that comes in I immediately look to see where we are with the valuation and just looking at the sales and I know most people probably don't want to hear this but it's the re, it's the reality of the real estate market is if you if you even look at the sales that are coming in now Although they're not as plentiful as they were for the two year period that we've already analyzed, they're even higher than the new value. So we'll leave that for next year, you know, when we start looking at this year's sales. But it, 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 as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's and you you know, the real estate better than me. You know, I mean, as far as the, the sales going, what's coming up, but I just don't see things changing that much. And so and then the state requires that we carry the full assessment on our tax rate and it has to be within 95 and 105 is the range no, 90 and 110 percent 90 and 110 yep so everything. and everything has to so everything and the what they call the coefficient of dispersion where we can't be uh, any we can't be five percent points away from that median in every category so everything right now if you were to look at our sales analysis it all conforms to the state's requirements and just running the um, the LA4 from last year, I did just a quick peek as, as to where we are and how much we went up. I don't have the exact percentage, but I do know that uh, valuation wise, it's close to 134 million from last year. Up. Up. Okay. And the year before that, it was over 150 million. So again, that just shows that we made changes to the base rates for almost every style of property. And we also adjusted our land schedule and I also adjusted the influence factor on all, almost every, it doesn't, doesn't matter where you are anymore in Stockbridge, um, like that sale that happened on Church Street for over a million. I mean, it, it just goes to show that um, location, location, location typically Maybe it still matters, but if you're looking and doing what we have to do in our office, it doesn't matter. So we've been adjusting the land as well to, to make it, to give enough of a percentage uh, where, where it's not all going to the building value. But in the end, the total value has to be within that range that the state requires for every single sale. And they don't care individually where it is, but in the, but in the overall scheme, you cannot submit an 80% to the state and think you're gonna be okay. So we're we're at 98% with a COD that is below five and it works. So that's what we're gonna be submitting most likely Monday or Tuesday next week. And I'll update you guys on that procedure, but I am in the state of mind now, we're on fiscal 24 tax bills. We're working now to get 
to the end. Once we get the, um, the new growth certified, then we can schedule the classification hearing and then start working on the tax rate. And we'll be a lot earlier with the tax bills. Again, most people don't want to hear that. But for us, that's a, that's a major thing. We'll be able to get that, those out in a timely manner and it won't be the week of Christmas. And hopefully it'll be before Thanksgiving. That basically covers number five and six. The, um, the LA 13 is our um, new growth. I will say just by looking at preliminary numbers, I don't have the final numbers for new growth. That's also up this year, which is excellent. I mean, so that, that that's an indication that we've picked up, you know, quite a few new homes, not full values on them. Most of them aren't even finished, but there's been some big projects that I looked at you know, this year in the uh, winter and the spring that will go on the um, the new growth for fiscal year 24. So we, I don't want to say, we could have a record year in new growth. It's It looks that good. Can you venture to guess how many new houses, residential dwellings? Oh my God, I've looked at least six, but again, not, not one of them is actually complete. And that's probably an indication of, you know, the supply, um, Supplies are just hard to get. That's what I'm getting from a lot of the contractors when I go out on the properties that, you know, I'll always ask, when do you think this is going to be finished? And they'll say, whenever we can get the materials to finish it. So that's been an indication. What we do is just flag whatever is done, pick up what we can as of January 1st, and then carry it over to next year. So we'll have a, a, a new stream of new growth carried over and the state will look at that also and they'll call and question they'll be like is this the full value and i said oh no we'll be picking up more for for next year but there's been a lot and not just you know a lot of additions and things like that too utility values have also seen an increase as well so that goes into new growth so i think we're going to be really good on our on our new growth that in a town like stockbridge really doesn't mean much. I mean, where I'm from in North Adams, that means everything because that's that much more you can tax every year, but it's still good to go and pick up every single, um, you know, building permit construction value that you can for the records and that's what we do. And that's really all I have. I mean, we do have to go into a um, executive session to discuss a, an exempt or tax exempt property. Oh, maybe we should it's take, the Tavidian property. Maybe we should take questions if there's. Yeah, any questions? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, here. I've got one quick question. Um, so at 134 million, Michael, you're going to have seen what about 280 million in growth over the last two years. In well, not necessarily growth, but in valuation. In valuation, growth, valuation, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and well, this year, unlike last year, where commercial rates were were flat, while residential rates were, um, were yeah, obviously saw the growth. Will if we see that again this year? Will commercial rates be flat? Yeah, there's there really are the majority of the increase of the 134 million is on the residential side. We really didn't have commercial sales to adjust the commercial properties. So, so those are my, gonna, my, those are pretty much going to remain the same. Yeah, my so my point is this and I'm not I'm not taking out a position. I'm not advocating. I'm just raising the question. Um that means in the last 2 years you've seen a roughly 25% decrease in the actual tax burden of commercial relative to residential because as the rate goes down if all commercial is flat then you basically see those tax bills go down and now that's getting pretty significant it actually is about a quarter uh you know in terms of a d decrease in the in the actual burden of commercial versus residential and the question that is going to be posed at some point i think a reasonable question is you know should uh, is it should the town have a policy to try to keep the actual relative burden of the commercial class the same as it's been historically by taking a look at at commercial versus residential because if if all the growth in values is in residential it effectively discounts commercial every year and you're going to be looking at a pretty significant drop if the rate was nine bucks and next year it's seven bucks you know in terms of the the actual you know uh 
uh, tax rate, you're seeing a pretty significant commercial decline in bills compared to the significant, you know, well, the, the burden the, falls to residential then. The thing about that is we're not picking up the, the commercial class is never going to get above 11%. So to shift the commercial tax rate to a, a base that is barely 10%, I'm not even sure it's going to make a dent. Right. So basically you're saying it's only a two point change. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, do you guys agree with that? Well, but we, no, no. We, I'll just say we also have to just, you know, whatever the commercial valuation is, is the, what the commercial valuation is. Right. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, I, yeah, we that's why I can't change it unless there. last year when we did the, the reval, we had four commercial sales. So there were increases. There will be increases this year also because they're going to be getting land valuation increases. It, it, you know, that's that's across the board, regardless if, if you're, you know, if you if you own a, a house on Main Street, but there's also a commercial property on Main Street and we adjusted the land value, they are going to see an increase. So I'm not saying there isn't going to be any increase at all. That base is a little bit higher based on uh, the, the land values that we made, but it's still not going to get it higher than a maximum of 12% of our total class of property. It's been like that since I started here. Right. We, we just don't have commercial um, construction that is going to, the only way that the commercial class can change is if we have exempt properties that go back on the tax rolls, because typically those are commercial properties. Mm -hmm. That, and it, that's not like that happens every you know fiscal year for us. We may be seeing that happen with one or two properties coming up, but um, you don't usually see this big burst of growth in the commercial class. And so when I go to the classification hearing, I'm always you know saying, well, that base itself isn't getting above that. I think it's eleven percent right now. Yeah, I was just so I was just small. commenting on the aggregate revenue from the commercial class versus the aggregate revenue from the residential class. And you're going to see as the rate goes down, if the commercial class is flat in terms of valuation, you're going to see the percentage paid by the residential taxpayers go up as a percentage of the entire, you know, amount that we raise. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And, and but but again, going back to what we're seeing for new growth, it's all in residential. So yes, theoretically, yes, these That's six new properties or eight new properties that are coming on each and every year are helping absolutely to right. and, the, and next year hopefully we'll see more like 60 come on because of uh of, of what's going to happen at elm court so you know uh oh that that's going to be huge impact. yeah they'll have a yeah. significant impact yeah. absolutely okay thank you you're welcome i think that's it then and do the um yep so we have to right so um brandy are you going to uh call us for the uh the executive piece um, it doesn't matter. I can. Is that typically what you do, or do you just shut down Zoom to everybody but me? No, no. Well, no, because we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to call one of us on our phones, then you could be part of the discussion. You okay. know, without the Zoom. I'll dial Mike real quick, and I'll close down Zoom. Okay. All right. So at this point, um, I would entertain a motion to um, first of all. Uh, close our current public hearing. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. And then, um, where's my little thing? And we're not going to go back. And we are not gonna come back into a public session after we go into executive session. So uh, I would entertain a, vo a motion to uh, enter into executive session per Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A. Section 21A7 to discuss the property tax exempt status for one property. Brandy? Yep, I okay. can hear you. Okay, sorry, Gary. All those in favor? Or, or a motion first, I guess. Uh, I so moved. All those in favor? Uh, second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're good.